This is episode 42, Harlem. This is the one where I'm going to say, insert either the main advert or the remind, the mini advert, and we can cut them into this uh, podcast. So I'm just going to record the content and you've got a um, another recording that's got the adverts in. Okay. Welcome to A Wealthy Life. Mental health is a very current topic. And even if you don't associate with the words sad, miserable, depressed, or any other negative feelings, then you may still not be happy, or at least as happy as you could be. In this episode, Three Reasons Why You're Never Going to Be Happy, I'm going to explain the three reasons that you're never going to be as happy as you could be, and how you can take steps to change that. Now, I'm just going to start with some sort of sideways question just to sort of get your brains going for a minute. When you make a meal, do you follow a recipe or do you just wing it and throw ingredients into a pan and hope for the best? When I'm cooking, I know what I want to create, but I normally go with instinct or if you like habit, they're often meals that I've cooked before. And then once I'm in the middle of cooking, I use smell first and then taste to tell me whether I'm on track because I'm not a great one for measuring things out. But recently I had a cold and it's robbed me of both my sense of taste and my sense of smell. And I was completely stuck. Here I was cooking, you know, a bolognese like I normally do, a vegetarian bolognese. And I, I couldn't smell it. I couldn't work out whether it was tomato enough. I couldn't I couldn't get those senses. I could could get to grips with anything that would tell me what this was going to taste like. And then when I went to taste it, I could taste absolutely nothing. And I had no plan for how to get out of this. And it got me thinking, OK, I relied on Bob and he helped as the taster which was ironic, really, considering he was the one that shared the sense killing germ in the first place and he could still taste. Anyway, Bob helped create the dinner that night. But what if you're winging your financial recipe? What if you're going by instinct? And that's okay as long as everything stays the same, as long as everything's normal, as long as your backup senses are working But what happens if something changes? This decade has been crazy. I knew at the end of 2019 that this decade was going to be amazing. I have to say, with my power of positive thinking, I thought it was the decade that we were going to come to our senses, that we were all going to be nicer to one another, that, you know, I don't know, just that we were going to have this really positive decade about moving forward and and stopping all of the unpleasantness and ridiculousness that goes on. And instead, Mother Nature has stepped in and she's given it her go, first by giving us COVID and locking us all in our houses and helping us see how important a hug is. And as a byproduct, getting all the cars off the road so it improved our uh, climate as a result of that. And now what we've got, we've had Brexit as well in the UK, which has told us the value of food easy to get on the shelves. And now what we've got is the war in Ukraine, where this one country that, let's be honest, most of us knew very little about is actually the food basket, the grain basket of the planet. This is This is the country, this country we probably couldn't have picked out on a map that is supplying grain to the majority of the world. It's the steel manufacturer for the world. It is supplying so much in terms of raw materials and we knew nothing about it. And so it's quite ironic, again, that we are being presented in 2020 with challenging situations, situations to get us to question the norm, question what's important to us, going to work or working from home, going out to restaurants or having a hug from a family member. You don't have to pick either or, but just to look at where the balance is 
in the future, to question what really makes you happy, to question what it is that you rely on and you may be taken for granted. And now what we're looking at is, you know, what's on the shelves. And of course, more recently, because of uh, the price hike in terms of fuel, and I know that I've been speaking to people in America, and I know, although you're not looking at getting your fuel from Russia, etc., that you're fairly self-sufficient, you're still facing increases in prices. Back in the old days, our grandparents, our great grandparents, if they were cold, they shut the door, they put another log on the flyer and they added on a. Jo- so sorry. Back in the old days, our grandparents or our great grandparents, if they were cold, they'd have shut the door, they'd have put another log on the fire and they'd have added another jumper. And yet we're so used to having this thing called central heating, we just crank it up. Now, because it's costing us money, we're starting to look at where there's all this waste. Again, side effect for the universe is maybe we're going to cut our consumption, fossil fuels, until we get the opportunity to bring in the renewables. So let's get back to your financial recipe. If you've been going by instinct, it's okay as long as your backup senses are working and nothing else is changing. But we've just proven we're only coming to the end of 2022. We're only two years into this decade of 10. And we have been through untold turmoil. What happens if you got the equivalent of a financial cold? What would happen to your plan? Could you afford to realize that your wealthy life plan just to go back to that food analogy, either tastes of nothing or or even doesn't smell very nice. What if your future is dull and there's nothing there for you and you're just going to rely on, I don't know, whatever shows up to make you happy? Wouldn't it be better to have a recipe or, or rather a plan to follow? So this is where I want to insert the advert, please. So the best thing about a wealthy life plan is that the side effect is that you will be happier now and happier in the future. So let me explain these three reasons that I say you're never going to be happy unless you change this, unless you reshape your thinking, reshape your relationship with your world and what you want out of it. So number one. You're not grateful for what you have until it's missing. Let me give you an example. We miss the sun. All right, maybe that, maybe that's quite UK centric at the moment because we're in winter. But I think we can all experience this all over the world. There's going to be periods where the sun either goes or if you live in a very hot country, you're delighted the sun goes. And actually, it's more the fact that the cold goes and the heat arrives. Whatever your circumstances, do you acknowledge and say thank you for a lovely sunny day or a cool day or the rain? Do you make time? Or worse, do you even have a lifestyle that allows you to make time to enjoy the sun, go and walk out in the rain, enjoy the wind or whatever it is that you enjoy in life? For me, from spring onwards, I am watching that weather forecast and I book days off away from the office to enjoy the outdoors. I shuffle my week around so that I can take the best days and do what I love. Go out in the garden, go for a walk in nature, maybe have a holiday or a weekend away. And that's because I follow the five principles of a wealthy life. I have a wealthy life plan that for me includes the free time in nature to enjoy. You remember the happy calendar that I helped you create in episode 34? What's on your happy calendar? And do you have the time to enjoy the moments that you want to create on that calendar? And I believe that if you're not grateful for what you have, you miss that opportunity to enjoy other experiences because why would you you're not grateful for what you've got why would you be grateful for more 
So I talk a lot about gratitude. I've talked about it a lot over different episodes, but I really believe that if you're not grateful for what you've got, it's very difficult to attract more into your life because you're not in the mindset to see things. You'll only be looking at the gaps. And I think I've spoken to you about that before. Number two, you don't appreciate the opportunities around you until somebody else has seized them. Now, of course, this is predicated on the fact that you even know what an opportunity is. And I don't mean that in a rude way. Not all opportunities are opportunities for everyone. Some opportunities are designed specifically for you. And I truly believe that. There are opportunities for everyone if you just know what you're looking for. What would constitute your opportunity? And then you have to pay attention and identify it when it comes your way. Fantastic book I read, probably around 2008, and which I always cite. And and I think it's probably the basis of my belief. And trust me, this is a lovely way to believe. The book's called The Celestine Prophecy. I'll put the links in the show notes for you by a guy called... James Redfield, I probably shouldn't refer to him as a guy, sorry, by the incredible author, Mr. James Redfield. And it was published in 1994. It's a very readable story with some real insights. And if you haven't read it, do go along and read it. And what we're saying here is that there are loads of opportunities all around us. But you have to know what constitutes an opportunity for you in order that when it's sitting there, you go, ah, that's my opportunity. I'm going to seize it. And in order to do that, you need to have a plan. You need to know what it is that you want to achieve. And by knowing what you want to achieve, you can then break it down and know what resources or um, contacts or opportunities you need to bring together that plan but without the plan you don't know what you need and therefore everything you need could be around you but you're missing it because you have no focus so if you don't appreciate appreciate the opportunity I'll do that again so sorry so if you don't appreciate the opportunities around you someone else will seize them because they are looking for them they are recognizing them So opportunity is a bit like a many to many. Not every opportunity is yours. There are plenty of opportunities that are yours, but there are also other people's. And if you're not ready, it's not a case of you grab them and someone else can't have them. But if you're not ready to spot those opportunities, you will miss them. And then number three. Number three is the fact that you will compare yourself with others when frankly, they're not happy and living a life of gratitude and appreciation anyway. And this, I know I bash it all the time. And yet I'm asking you as part of my offer to be one of the five that then work with me in 2023 is the social media. And I'm asking you to go to social media and to like and to follow and to do all of those things. And then I'm also going to knock it in a minute. But I think it's something that you can control. It's it's like everything. If you have a plan and you know how you want to create your life, you can then choose the social media channels and the social media personalities, if we call them, or people that you want to follow, that you want to read. But for the bulk of people, and remember, these are people that will do things like watch EastEnders and Coronation Street And when I spoke to you about the levels of thinking, there is that mind at the bottom that is still scrabbling around going, have I got a roof over my head? Have I got enough food in the fridge? Am I warm enough? Um, You know, have I got have I got all the basic needs that I have and that I need to live? And then you've got the level of mind that goes, oh, yeah, all right. I've got everything I need. Now I'm flitting around all over the place in the drama watching drama, getting engaged in drama. And that's what stops you being creative. That's what stops you being entrepreneurial. That stops you living the wealthy life that you want. And if you're there in that drama zone, the social media, the news, the adverts, and potentially even the friends that you have will trigger 
comparison. They're, I mean, the social media, the news and the adverts are designed for that. Why do you think every advert has got these gorgeous looking men and women dressed in a certain way, smelling a certain way, going to certain places, having certain holidays, wearing certain clothes, eating certain food? Because they, the advertisers, are trying to persuade you that that's what you want. But how many times do we hear about celebrities relationships breaking up how many times have we heard about celebrities unfortunately ending their lives because they're not happy it's all an illusion and it's an illusion triggered by the marketeers however you can find your way through that you can come off platforms that don't provide the sort of content that you want that is supporting you in the life that you want to leave and you can choose to follow people that produce the content that you do want to read about and you can get away from that comparison mode if you like our parents would have referred to this as keeping up with the joneses and i did a bit of a google because sometimes when i come up with these phrases i'm i'm very aware that there are people all over the world listening to this podcast and you may not have heard this as a phrase keeping up with the joneses when you google it it actually started back in 1913, goodness me, you know, over a century ago, because there was an American comic strip with little characters who did things in order to impress their neighbours who were called the Joneses. It later became a, a film, of course, all these things do, back in 2016. The saying means trying to appear rich to impress other people. And what I would say to you at that point is who really cares? You know, this is the modern problem that we have. It's social media irritating this unconscious need to, I don't know, get the attention of or uh, to appear better than or to be the sort of person that other people would envy. And is that really what matters to you? Do you really want to live your life so that other people who don't care about you and may not even know you think that you're something that you may not even really care about in the first place? I mean, that that's sort of like the, the worst recipe for madness, if ever there was. I'm going to be something that I'm not happy with, but I know by being this thing, other people who I don't know and don't care about uh, will think that I'm special, but actually I'm miserable. And therefore, that's why you'll not be happy in the future. Commit to being real. Live 2023 and 2024 and onwards as if you don't care what other people think. Decide what matters to you. Caveat here, as long, of course, that that does no actual harm to others. But live your life according to your values, your true values. Doing what you love with those that matter most, a wealthy life, or a life that is wealthy by doing what matters to you most with those that you love. That's that for a thought. Harlan, can you insert the summary advert here, please? So somehow in this episode, I've taken you from a story where I couldn't smell the dinner I was cooking to creating a plan on how to live your life according to your values, a wealthy life so that you can avoid never achieving unhappiness and you can focus on achieving the happiness you want, whatever that means to you. So there were three things for you to remember. One, gratitude. I've spoken to you about this so many times. I've created exercises. Sorry, I'm just going to go back over that again because I had to cough. Right. So somehow in this episode, I've taken you from a story where I couldn't smell dinner to creating a plan where you can live your life according to your values, live a wealthy life, live a life so that you can avoid never 
achieving the happiness. That's like a double negative, isn't it? How about putting out the way around so you can focus on achieving the happiness, whatever that means to you. So there were three things that I spoke about, three things that I'd like you to remember, to to ponder on when you get to the end of this podcast, to integrate into your life and do things differently. So number one is gratitude. And I've spoken about this a lot. I've shared exercises with you. Um, It's a simple case of every day, get up and just say this thing to yourself. I am grateful for, and then name, name three things. And before you go to bed, make the last thing you think of, oh, wow, what an amazing day I've had. Today, I am grateful for and name the three things that happened today or that you experienced today or that you felt today that you are grateful for. That's it. That shift, that simple exercise, but that shift is so powerful. I cannot explain to you how that calms all of the chatter in your head. I, You can probably imagine it's quite noisy in my head but it's not negative talk. It's ideas. I've quietened down the humdrum and the miserable voices and everything else because I practice gratitude. And you just practice this and then it just becomes instinct. And if all of a sudden, I don't know, a few months down the line, something negative starts to, a little negative worm starts creeping its way in again, reinforce the gratitude exercises go back to it again the second thing I spoke about was appreciating the opportunities you can only appreciate the opportunities is if you can identify what is an opportunity for you and that's going to take a plan what is it that you want I mean at this point of recording and release where we're in late December 2022 we've got a whole new year ahead of us but actually whenever you listen to this podcast is a perfect time What's your plan? How do you want to live your life? And when you know that, you know what you need to achieve and you can then start to identify those opportunities that are all around you. And that's another massive shift because then not only are you coming from a place of gratitude, but you're coming into a place of abundance. You know that actually everything out there is really conspiring to help you. Nothing is against you. If you feel that the whole world is against you and another sort of way of saying things, but if you feel that way, it's because you're not clear what you want and you're not identifying the opportunities or speak to me. (laughs) And above all, stop comparing yourself. Live the life you want. What's going to make you happy, truly happy, And what do you need to do to get it? And don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Focus on what you need to move yourself forward. Because at the end of it, where I speak to you about the unconscious mind, the conscious mind, and then moving into a higher state and a heightened state of thinking, it's very difficult to do that if you're not feeling happy. It's very difficult to train your mind into a new way of thinking if you're burdened with negative thoughts and feeling miserable and everything else. I wonder if we'd never had social media, if we'd never done all of this stuff and we'd stuck with just, you know, ordinary TV that switched off at 10 o'clock and everybody had to go to bed and, uh, you know, it wasn't on a Saturday morning or something, whatever it was in the old days with telly. And I wonder if we'd never had the internet. Yes, of course, there would be things that we lost and some of the connectivity But I wonder what the state of mental health of of the country and the planet would be if we weren't stuck in this grind of always thinking we wanted more because we saw it, not appreciating the opportunities that are in abundance all around us because we're all over the place thinking we want this, that and the other and we have no clear plan because we're busy comparing ourselves to everybody else, people we don't even know possibly don't even like and certainly have no idea about us and our lives and what matters to us I want you to be happy it's not an idle wish it's a wish that has meat on it it's a wish 
that I can help you do something about it. I can help you create a wealthy life. Getting the mindset right is the first step. And so please go back and listen again to the three things that I've spoken to you about and look at how they manifest in your life and what you can do about it so that you can put yourself on that even keel and live a much happier, wealthier life from now onwards. So as always, I thank you for listening to a Wealthy Life podcast. My name is Vicky Wushe, and I hope that I've been able to add a little more whoosh to your life. Over the next, I think, six or eight episodes, I'm going to be sharing with you tips. I'm going to bring in some guest interviews and all of this to help you really boost up your ability to make 2023 an absolutely amazing year. And one of those things is going to be the opportunity to work with me completely for free. I really just want to take five people forward on this. I have clients that I'm working with, people that I'm helping invest in property, people that I'm teaching to learn how to invest in property, people that I'm finding the properties for. And I'm fine with that side of the business. But because of the way I manage my time, I looked at it and I thought, what can I do? And this is an opportunity for me to give something back, for me to help five people. And I'd love it if it was you. So check out the show notes, connect on the socials, send an email through to Kimberly, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much for listening.